Hey everyone, a few days ago I put out to Snapchat about doing a Q&A with our friends Molly and Arak here in Canada and we're doing um, questions related to relationships. Basically, Lewis and I and Molly and Arak have been working from home together for the last probably a year, both of us, solidly a year. And there's a lot of people out there who are struggling within their relationship, whether one person is still got a job and one person's not, or just general relationship questions that we, you know, have some experience in that we wanted to talk about. Um, just to let you know who Molly and Eric are, they work with Infinite Prosperity as well. And we met these guys in Bali in April this year, and we've just become really close friends. And we've spent Christmas in Canada with them on our big trip. So yeah, let's get into it. First question. Where has been your favorite place to travel so far? Who's going first? You uh, go first. You guys go first. That's easy, eh? Bali. Yeah, I think Bali. Yeah. Maybe because you guys were there with us. Yeah. But it's a beautiful place. Uh yeah, Bali, Vegas, and Bali and Vegas. Vegas. Oh yeah, Vegas. Oh, I love Vegas. Yeah, yeah Vegas, Vegas was, was awesome. Good, yeah. Vegas yeah. was good. Um, are we all vegan? And did we? When did we decide to make the change? And what were people's reactions? That's a good one. It's a great one. Really good question. Yeah. Yes, we're all vegan. Uh, Lewis is like eighty percent. I'm like ninety percent vegan. Okay. I'm vegetarian, and sometimes when I get a burger and it's got a little <laughs> bit of mayonnaise, cheeky bit of cheese, I will eat that. <laughs> yeah. I'm ninety percent vegan. But yeah, we're all vegan. We all made like we made the change probably about two years ago. We've we're over two years now. We're over two yeah. years, mm. and what about you guys? We're um, as of August officially vegan, but we in the house we haven't had meat in like over mm. a year. Well, no longer. Like we've never we don't cook meat in the house. We never did. But when we met you guys in Bali and learned a bit about like your diet and everything, mm-hmm. it intrigued us, and we did research, and it's changed our lives, eh? Yeah. One yeah, video that awesome. people could watch to that would inspire them to learn more about it. Yeah. Do you have one? Do you guys remember what's that guy's name? Um, the doctor, the, the bald uh, guy. Yeah, the leading causes. It's like death. Death. the leading causes of death. Something? Yeah, Someone I'll link it down below. YouTube <laughs> video, leading causes of <laughs> yeah. death. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an hour long. It's a free video on YouTube. I think it's, yeah, had it's like over really a million good. views now. Yeah, you it's told me to watch. Really that. good. Yeah. It's yeah. one of those things that when you watch it, you can't. It's hard to argue it. Yeah, when there's so much mm-hmm. data. It's hard to ignore. Yeah, it's hard to ignore anyway. Yeah, you could you could argue it, but. I'll link it down below. And another really good um, documentary to watch is Cowspiracy. Mm. It's had a lot of social media presence in the last few months, and it's a really good one. It talks a lot of different avenues, not just the health side, which I didn't know about, which was fascinating. Mm. Now that we've done all the fun, um, quick questions, there were quite a few that came in that were a little bit more serious, a little bit more lengthy I guess you'd call them so we're gonna split these up into each couple um as each one is suited a little bit better for us so the first one is for Molly and Rack. um was there a point where one of you was in the rat race and one of you wasn't and was there any jealousy uh that's a good one <laughs> yeah um yeah you quit your job in I believe it was March 2014 yeah and um I was still working in nine to five uh, so there was a bit of jealousy there. Like I was getting up every day at you know six forty five, and he's passed out. Um, but oh, Petri! <laughs> Petri! Petri's jumped up on the camera. <laughs> Petri, we're trying to film a very important video here, mate. <laughs> oh, he just wants to get involved. Carry um, on. Yeah. So, but the thing was that, um, yeah, I was a little bit jealous, but we had set a goal that I would quit by the end of the same year. So I was, you know, I was in peak state of mind. I was mm-hmm. like, just ready to go, ready for the end of the year. And actually that happened, right? It did. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Cool. All right. Next question. Are we going to do one now? Yeah. No Have we ever had to deliberately cut any unsupportive friends and family out of our life? At the beginning stages of our journey, and why? Uh, I'll let you go first. Yes. Um, so there was a point in time, I guess, when I went from just doing the normal thing to doing a different thing, and when that happened, yeah, a lot of people weren't supportive, and so I just stopped hanging out with them. Right? There was another group though who they were supportive, but they weren't on the same wavelength. They weren't on the same journey. They weren't on the same page. So even though they weren't hating or negative or unsupportive they were just sort of neutral they were still good friends of mine that just weren't doing the same thing at that point in time yeah. and it's not that I didn't cut them out right mm-hmm. I, it's just that if you're 
all your focus and energy is going on to one thing, there's no time in the day left for other things. Mm -hmm. And so I, I drifted. There's one group, a small group, that I just cut. Mm -hmm. There was a bigger group that I just sort of gradually drifted. Mm -hmm. And they're the group that still, if I call them today, like we catch up and we have like yeah. a great time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they weren't like unsupportive or anything, but you just drift because your focus changes and there's other yeah, things that you have to focus on, right? Yeah. Um, at different stages of your life. Um, that's about it. Yeah. The family one, I could talk, I could write a book about the family issue. It's, it's something that happens to everyone. Like you guys have experience on it. We have experience on it. Nearly every person that I've spoken to who's in this success mind frame and, you know, striving for something different that's completely out of the box to what they were taught has an issue with their families. And I think the main thing to remember is sometimes your families can be the ones who uh, can criticize you the most because it's easy for them to criticize you. You grew up in the same house, you had the same conditioning, you had the same parents, you know, you had the same education and yet you're the one who's gone off and done something that's completely out of the spectrum. And yeah, you can be set up to be criticized. But the number one thing to remember and the number one thing that I've struggled with the most but I've learned the most from is that no matter what, it's coming from love. It's coming from a place of love and it's coming from a place of protection and security. And it may not seem like that in the beginning, but you have to find where it really comes from and that they're, they're just genuinely, you know, they love you. Mm -hmm. And if you just keep your mind on the goal and just keep striving for what you want, they'll catch up. They will. And they will support you no matter what. And I think that's what's really important to remember. And I think that's why it's so important we have each other because at yeah. the end of the day, we can bounce ideas off of each other and that's where like our conversations are, yeah. right? Totally. And we're both lucky in that sense. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So next one for you guys is what were some of the mindset changes that you guys have gone through together and separately that's changed your relationship? Mm. Tons, yeah. You yeah, kick tons. It so I was always had the belief that anything in life is achievable. I didn't know at first, I didn't know how to do it, right? But I always had that mindset that I don't want to be normal. I want to own that Ferrari. I want to have the Lamborghini. I want more out of life, not just the mediocrity. Um, and I think that's where I was different, where I excelled in the mediocrity. Yeah. <laughs> like I was great at like doing my, you know, secretary yeah. jobs or whatever, but. Yeah, yeah so they're always kind of like, kicked off with me because mm -hmm. I, like once I actually figured out what it was that I wanted to do which was trading um, at that point I started to listen to a lot of audiobooks mm -hmm. um, and I, until this point we listen to roughly two to three audiobooks a month mm -hmm. uh, but you never used to no right it started <laughs> off me first and then me te teaching you kind of in a way uh, by the way I act uh, by the things that we talked about and then finally something sparked in you and I then know, you started just clicked. Yeah. but I think what what kicked everything off for us was the Tony Robbins yeah. Ultimate Edge program like it really was yeah. what just got me to think from a different mind state yeah. but yeah. I think audiobooks audiobooks yeah. change your life education the, yeah. exactly. the one thing that is funny now is because like I listen to a lot of audiobooks and so does Molly, so does Molly at this point but it's like the way I listen to it, I try to absorb all the information and then move on to the next thing. So I try to learn as much as I can in the shortest amount of time. Whereas Molly, she literally absorbs the book, takes her a little bit longer to actually read it. Takes me longer because I like to read a little but bit But she becomes time. like a master at it. So that's the mm -hmm. difference now. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. This next one um, is for Lewis and I. And we got a lot of people um, writing in about having a similar sort of case study and a similar sort of situation. So I won't exactly read the question out, but um, what the general idea is a lot of people are currently in relationships where one person is living this lifestyle and is on this mindset and is, you know, striving to get success and, you know, think outside the box. And the other is, you know, is still maybe still got a job in nine to five. Maybe they're still doing college or uni and they're, you know, not really – wanting the same lifestyle and then you're not going down the same path your values have shifted but yet you're still in a relationship and you still love each other which can be very hard and it's a difficult situation and i think that both of us as couples have been there 
Mm-hmm. Mm. And we, that's yeah. how Lewis and I started, really. We did start like that. Yeah. And it didn't work. No. Mm. I wanted to do... I was doing this way of life. Robin was conditioned and she was doing what she was, was taught to do that way of life. Yeah. yeah. And when you get together, there's a honeymoon period. You can fake it and then you can mm. get over it. Eventually, yeah. it's going to take a toll. Yeah. And something has mm. to budge. Either the person going this way pulls the other one that way, or this person pulls them that way, or there's just a mutual agreement that you have to go your own way. Yeah. yeah. We broke up. We did. So we got together and we there was obviously a lot that we really liked about each other and loved about each other. But because when you are on this route of like success, you have to be so strong in what you want. We have to break up because I wasn't at that level yet. I didn't have that value and that urge that Lewis had to be successful. I still wanted to work in my nine to five and and not participate. So we broke up and it took us breaking up for me to go and for the for the you know for it to click myself for for me to make that change in myself mm-hmm. and not be you know not be told by Lewis to do this you have to work it out for yourself otherwise you'll never have that spark so there was like a few books that I said to Robin for the first year of our relationship yeah. read these books read these books here they are go read them go read yeah. them she didn't read them no um and the books themselves is was the st- was like a a pack of five books I think it was you can mention them after yeah that I suggested that she read because having read them and understood what they teach is the start of the path that I'm on and I'm on the, yeah I'm on the, I mean yeah yeah does that make mm-hmm. sense yeah you and know. you just like I personally had to make that decision to read them for myself not to make Lewis happy not to do it just because he told me to it had to be for my own reasons and my own purpose and I think in relation to these people who have written in, it's it's hard when you love that person and you want them to come on this journey with you. But at the end of the day, you can never change somebody. You can never force somebody to do it. You have to do it yourself. And if you are on this path and you are tapped into the law of attraction and you are focused on what you want, you will attract people into your life who are on that journey as well. And I mean, look at us. We were struggling with finding people who wanted to travel the world and finding friends who were wanting the same life. And we went to Bali and we met these crazy kids who (laughs) were on that path, who were on that journey. You know, we attracted each other into in the lives. It's the same in relationships. You just have to put out into the universe what you want and people will come to you. Yeah. One thing on that is always keep an abundant mentality. It is a Mm -hmm. cliche that there's plenty of fish in the sea, uh but it's true yeah mm-hmm. and if you have to split with someone um don't like w- don't worry too much about that it's gonna happen you're not doing them any favors by staying with them if ultimately you're not destined to stay together yeah it's in your best interest and it's in their best interest for to, to do it to have an amicable split learn and take away every lesson that you've had from being with them and move on. The more you are focused and more that you're concentrating on what's your highest value, going on your path, doing what's most fulfilling to you, you're going to build yourself up. You're going to learn more. You're going to have better results. You're be- going to become a more attractive person and you'll attract someone. Yeah, right? You'll totally attract right. someone into yeah. your life that's more f- fitted to you. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, it's yeah. the same thing as like having friends, having those mm-hmm. friends. It's like, uh, when you when your values change and you start focusing on other things, those friends shift. And those friends kind of disappear. They move away, right? But once you start working on your values, working on your goals, you start attracting other friends mm-hmm. who have the same values, who have the same goals, who have the same mindset. And it's kind of the same in relationships. It's a little bit harder because mm-hmm. you do love that person, yeah. right? But slowly you're going to drift. You're going to shift. You're going to argue. You're going to fight, right? And that's not going to work out. And it's easy to believe that you won't attract those people. Mm -hmm. But like, I remember you and I had a conversation in the spring and I said to you, like, I, you know, I don't have a lot of friends anymore because Mm -hmm. my mindset has changed and you were like, send it out to the universe. And I did. And you guys are back. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're back. There you go. Yeah. I don't want to end this video on a downer about like, you have to break up with them. (laughs) You don't. Um, But 
Yeah, it, it does happen. I mean, it happened with Lewis and I. It happened with Eric and Molly, you know, but you never force somebody to do it. You know, you have to let your partner make the decision on their own like Molly and I did. You can, like, be a constant f- a source of inspiration. Yeah. And you can say, mm-hmm. check this yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Look at these yeah. results. But there's people, like, one of them, one of our students sent in. Yeah. I have these incredible... He's a full-time trader. He's just banked 150% return for the year. Like, yep. the enormity of that achievement is ridiculous. Yeah, wow. For your spouse, the person who is meant to be supporting you and who's meant to love you, to then be like, no, that you shouldn't do that? You have to make yeah. the decision, you know, and if you're living on your highest value and you're living the life that you want to live, there will be times when that doesn't work and you may have to split but there may also be times when somebody comes into your life that is in total agreement with that and total support and that's ultimately what you want so yeah i hope you guys learned something i hope you enjoyed our answers and you know learned was a little bit good? more about I us think that was good. i think yeah. that was good it was we'll, good. we'll see what it looks we'll like see, in we'll yeah. <laughs> yeah um but yeah thanks so much for watching guys we'll see you later bye uh, i don't want to go home